Start recording. Here we go. Dave here, how are you? Today is the 1st of March, the first day of autumn for us in Australia. Now, I know there's going to be a few people that will say it's not technically the first day of autumn. Well, in Australia, it is. That's, <laughs> that's what they tell us. This is the first day of autumn. I don't know whether it's because of it's our latitude south or whatever it is, but I do know that my Canadian maple outside in the garden is starting to change its colours already. So... But then again, I have, some, I have some weeping cherries that started flowering two weeks ago. The weather we've had has just thrown everything out of sync. But I'm getting back to the point, it is, going, it is autumn. All right, now today on the show, let's have a look. I trust you've all had a good week. Uh, I've had a great week. Let me see. Dust extractor update. I've got some photos. Uh, let's make the wooden hand plane. Continuing with this project down here. Today we're going to uh, work on the escapement. Rip that paduke down the centre and put the sides on, glue it on, and we will be using epoxy resin because the bottom here is jarrah. We may even start working on the lever cap as well, but we'll see how we go. Uh, turn a 220 block plane update and work on the sole of it. Now, I'm going to do something today that is going to make a lot of people cringe when we get to that point, but I'm going to wait until I've finished doing all of the nice clean stuff before I get into the dirty stuff. Uh, the traditional tools group meeting slideshow. Let's have a quick look at that. This is what happened uh, last Sunday and I'll see if I've got the video here. Oh, this is just a quick pan around the room. And this is a little bit of a slideshow that I put together of some of the things. I, there's a turner number seven in the middle. Some of the things I saw down there. This slideshow hopefully will continue to keep going. Yes, there we go. New software. <laughs> but how nice is that? Don't you love seeing things like this? I get a kick out of seeing old tools. Look at them all lined up. They're all nice and clean. Again, maybe I'm a little bit strange. That's where I thought I'd see... A 220 turner but I think that's a 220 Falcon the second one from the end this guy here is Wayne and Wayne is uh, a hell of a talent with carpentry oh sorry with joinery and he's building a new shed and this guy is the god of hand planes in Australia this is Jim Davies and uh, his wife said the only time he smiles is when he sells a plane now he had this box with him and it's a mechanics box I think I'm not sure of the exact name I couldn't quite read the top after I'd taken the photo. Jim did tell me, but I forgot. Now, he's made a couple of drawers for it because they were stuffed. And that drawer there is to hold the book that's on the left-hand side. And Jim was saying the book increases in size every edition, what it used to, and they had to keep on making that drawer wider. So that's pretty, <laughs> that was pretty cool. And what else we got there? Just another picture of the crowd all milling around and saying, yeah, I want that plane. My advice, if you go to these things, make sure you get there dead early. Now, my Turner 220 was beside those red cars under the cage there. I spent ages going around, 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 and finally I spotted it. More planes, more planes. Yeah, my advice is, if you want to go to one of these shows, get in there early. And that uh, plow plane, I think it is in the bottom left corner, that's the picture of it on the box in the next slide that we started off with. How nice is that? Do you ever get out to things like that? The, the traditional tool group in Australia, uh, if you are interested in old gear and hand tools, get in touch with them. That's all I can. Just look them up on the internet. TTTG, the traditional tool group. All right, so we've done one little thing right off the bat. Um, okay, the Timber Tools and Artisans show in Brisbane, 20th to 22nd of March. That's only three weeks away. So I will be next show 
I'll be giving away free tickets. So what I'll do is I'll run a little raffle copter thing again, and it will only be open to people in Australia, let's say Northern Territory, Queensland, and New South Wales. Only if you're going to go there though. But don't put your hand up and say, Dave, I want the tickets, and then don't, don't use them. Because you know, you're gonna put someone else out that could have used them. Um, support the channel through Patreon and Amazon, the link's below, as I say every week. All right, first thing we're going to do is work on this. Now, last week we cut the escapement out with the bandsaw. So it's this section here, and I want to clean it up, and I've probably left a little bit too much meat on the front here. So I'm going to clean this up, and I'm going to use the belt and disc sander down here. I do have it on oscillation at the moment, and I've been using it for other things today as well. But I'm going to use the nose of it down here to do the first part, just to rough this out to what I want. And then I'll use the spindle sander up here, which has got a finer grit in. I've got 60 grit in that thing. So I'll switch over. I'm hoping I've got the remote here for the dust extractor. I do. I'll turn that on. And hopefully it's going to this one. Yep. This is the uh, stuff that I clean the belts with. All right, go to the other camera, David. There, switch over. There we go, over here now. All right, I'm gonna put some eye muffs on because this thing's a noisy fellow. I really don't have too much issue with getting damage from um, there, but let's spin it around here. This is where I'm gonna be working. Round to the other side and turn her on. Okay, as I say, I've got it oscillating. Which means it's just traveling backwards and forwards, so I'm not working with one piece of paper at a time. I'm going to go in carefully here. That's why. 60 grit is very quick. Go in again. The dust extraction on this is fantastic. You can see I've got a bit wonky there, so I've got to push down a little more on that side. That's better. That brings it back pretty quick. A little bit more. Nearly there. I think I'm going to go over to the bottom sander now. I keep calling it the bottom sander. A lot of people tell me, nope, it's a spindle sander. I'll switch cameras. Again, to there. Take that off. All right, I need to put the other camera, the camera just there, I should say. Spin this around. Raise the legs up. I made comment during the week on Facebook about, you know, if, has anyone ever made a hand plane on their own? And Jim put his hand up, Jim Davey. He and his son, or sorry, his nephew, I should say, made one. They made one each. And they put a little step in the uh, lever cap so it didn't slide down all the way. I think it was a good addition. Let me have a look at this other camera, see if I've got it in the right spot. And you know what? I don't think it's going to get much better than that. All right. Now, what I've got here is these things don't really collect a lot of dust. They do a job, but not a great job. It's all so over underneath this table. It's really open and the dust extraction port is on the other side. 
I've got it hooked up to the other vac, so it's just going to pull it automatically when I turn it on. I am going to put my these guys, this guy on, because it's one of those things. There goes the voice. That if you don't put it on, you end up next time I blow my nose, it's going to come out black. All right. These things turn this direction, so if you put it on this side, it's going to bite in. So you put it on this side, and it's going to be a whole lot easier. There we go. That's straightening, straightening it up beautiful. Right. I'm going to come around this side a little bit further so you can see it actually happening. So that, that's getting it square. Slowly coming across. Again. Another one. I think that might do me. That's looking pretty good. Switch the cameras. Back to here. So that's how it's ended up. 100 grit, and that's how I'm going to leave it. Take these off. All right. Quick drink. Got something on my specs there on the inside. All righty. Now, tuck that back in. So, this is going to go there, like that. Now, what they say is to put the blade in with the bevel down. So this is the bevel. For people that aren't aware of what a bevel is, that's the bevel there. The other side is the, is the flat. And ordinarily, that would go down. Um, in, in an ordinary, if it's a bevel down plane, which is what most bench planes are, the bevel would be down and pointing back this way. If it's a bevel up plane, which is what most block planes are because they get and low angles because they get down really low. If you had it down this way, the the back of the bevel would start to bump and the plane would just skid along, wouldn't actually cut. So unfortunately their label, I think, is going to be facing down. So what we're going to do is do as they say, and I'll pop it in there and bring it back to there. Now that's when I glue it together. Next thing we are going to do. Is the exciting part. I'm going over to the table saw and we'll rip this paduke down and while I'm over there I may also put the piece of red gum that I'm going to use for the lever cap over the jointer. So I'll move the camera and we'll do all of that. Won't be long. Yes, the uh, the 220, when I saw it there, that was, that was such a buzz at the traditional tool group that uh, I, because I did the show pre-recorded and then I went down and I scurried back for the premiere of the show so I could answer questions. I made it back in 10 minutes, <laughs> it's a bit 10 minutes to spare from here down to Thornley and back up into the Blue Mountains. 
was a very busy morning. But uh, you don't want to hear any more about that. Let me switch the cameras over. And there we've got the Paduke waiting. I've already set it up at uh, 65 millimeters. They say two and a half inches. I'm going to close this dust port off back up here. Sorry, I should have done this prior. Good. Running into everything. And put that there. Open the bottom section up. And the table saw open. Got it. All right. I've lowered the blade down so I've got enough so it'll cut through. It's always good. Check your blade's going to make it all the way through. Don't have it up too high. I've gone for the nice side of this. This is, I jointed this first before I brought it over here. There's a cup, there's a spot up the end here that's a little bit split, so I want to keep away from that. But this is nice grain. So we'll pop that down, turn the dust extractor back on. And get my push stick out. Turn the saw on. Oop. I haven't got it turned on because I've had something else plugged into the outlet. Take that out. Now the thing is, this saw is, mount, is fitted with an NVR switch, which is a no volt release. Basically it's a little electro, electronic magnet. So the saw didn't start up when I actually plugged it in there, which is handy. Now she's working. Run this through. I'm using the grip blade. And I've got the kickback holes there, keeping me safe. Going through with the push stick and continue. This is the part that we're going to put over the bandsaw. Now, I could, I could rip it here. I've got enough height. That blade, when it stops spinning, has enough height, but it's also got a very large kerf. It's an eighth of an inch. So if I was to do that and rip it, I would lose all of that meat out of here. And I don't want to. I'm going to try it on the bandsaw because the blade is about one third the thickness, the kerf. Here, I might make a box out of. I wanted to keep some length in that. I'm not going to use all of this. I might have a little bit left over. This is so much fun. I love this stuff. All right, I'm going to switch that off. Close that. Take this over to the bandsaw. Switch this camera to there. I'll go and grab that other camera and put it beside the bandsaw so you can see what's happening. <sighs> Drop that. Yes. Magic weather at the moment. I love autumn. It is so comfortable. After all the extreme weather we've had, it's such a relief. Spin that around there and like that. That might be okay. Uh, make a comment in the side if you want to, down here. Um, I think it's down there. As to what's your favourite season? I'm only saying that because I'm filling time as I'm going along. Have another quick drink. Make sure that I've got that port open. I think I have mentioned before that Bandsaws aren't brilliant as far as dust extraction is concerned, but this one's not too bad. That's not bad. What I'm going to do, it's very close. I'll turn the dusty on when I find my remote. That seems to be going all right from there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push the timber in, do a little cut, then I'm going to spin her over 
and go again. So that'll let me know if I'm pretty close or not. So I'm a fair way out. So I need to bring it over another two millimeters. Out there, let's see what happens. Or I could just line it up with the center. I've gone just a touch too far. That looks pretty good. I'm going to use the gripper that I showed everyone last week because it's got a flat base. I can sit it like that, and it's got these little drop downs that are going to help me as well. So I can push past. I'll click these ones out of the way. They're going to stay up, the ones at the back are going to drop. And that should work pretty well for me. Ah, it's wanting to drop into that. There she goes. perfect cut but that's going to do us for the moment okay dust extraction off wherever it is oh, David, David David where'd you put it there you go it's off alrighty not really a blade for ripping it's only a little 3 8 blade but it did the job let me switch cameras back here. All right. This is exciting. Ah. Now, basically, it's going to look like that and like that. But I'm going to glue it with epoxy. Now, we're not going to get too much done. Let me see how we're doing for time. Doing pretty good. We'll stay in time this week. Ah, oh, lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I, even, even with the sides being slightly different thickness, I'll fix that with the, I'll put it over the jointer. Not with the blade in there though. All right, so now the next thing I need to do, I notice also I have the outside I sanded and dressed and they're going to be my inside. So they're already cleaned up for the glue joint. Lovely, take that off. Take this mechanism out. See, that's the one we put in last week, which is great. And that's all good. Pop that down there for the moment. Now I'm get the epoxy and I've got a chunk of melamine here to mix up on this is some waste. Um, I used to, it's funny, I used to uh, keep absolutely every off cut of melamine because, you know, it costs you money to buy the sheet. And you think, oh, I might use that a little bit. But it gets to a point where there are so many of the rotten things you can't walk around because you're tripping over all of these 
treasures. So I got I get rid of a lot of them, and I use a lot of them for this kind of thing here. Now this epoxy resin is two to one mix by volume. So this is the resin, and this is the hardener. And I'm going to make sure we're still going well. Yep. Open this up. What are we doing here? Dust extractor update as well, which I'll do in a minute. I'll let you see that after we clamp this up. I'm going to use a chunk of uh, plywood again. This is I don't have any paddle pop sticks or anything like that. I'm going to get a fair bit out and mix it up here. A little bit more. Now the trick is, you probably can't see that. Should I bring the camera from there back over here? How about I do that? Because it's a white background, it might struggle. And I haven't set it to have its um, focus locked. There we go. Okay, so there's the resin. If I leave this screwdriver in this area or something else that's high contrast, the blade maybe, that's a good high contrast point. So it might lock onto the focus there for us. Um, now, the hardener. Not a lot left in there, but nonetheless, it's in there. Maybe a bit too much. What do you reckon? Do you reckon that looks like two to one? I think it may be a little bit too much. Well, that's dangerous. I put a tiny little bit of the resin back, but everything else is good. There we go. I think that'll do me. All right, I'm gonna use this one to mix it. The good thing about epoxy as a glue is that it takes a long time to go off. So you've got a whole lot of assembly time. But if you mix a lot of it up in one batch, it goes off really quickly. It gets very hot. It's the same as resins for resin tables and things like that, which everyone seems to think is flavor of the month. You gotta, everything's got to have a resin table or something. Um, I haven't done it much. I've done it with my display for the hand planes for Turner because I thought that'd be really swish. There we go. All right, next. It says in my book here, we'll do some reading. Okay. Arrange the inner body cutouts and side pieces as shown in figure nine. There. See, they've only got the clamp on the heel of the, of the um, base, of the foot, of the, uh, the sole, all that kind of stuff, the rear end of the plane. The front, they haven't clamped yet. So saying, apply wood glue to the adjoining surfaces and place a clamp on the back portion, leaving the front piece free to move. So we're gonna do that now. We're gonna put the glue on the actual, bring it up there a bit further. We're gonna put the glue, lots of contrast there. I haven't got to worry about that anymore. Glue on this surface and also on this surface. Now this stuff, goes a long way. Now I guess it would be a plan, and I think I'll do it now, to put, to put some blue tape on here. And I guess I should have also sanded that mark off. I can do that inside later on. 
So I'll get some tape and I'll cover that. I don't want to get epoxy all over that because that's the, the bed for the blade to sit on. I don't think they make any comment about that in their instructions. Maybe that's something that they could have a look at. That's just a little heads up. And the other side. Don't get it over the edge because you don't want it to fight with the joint. Go a bit further over there, David. That's looking pretty good. And I'll try and do it on the escapement as well. Turn that sideways. I don't know how I'm going to go with this. We'll see if I can get the blue tape in that curve. Start in the middle. Well, I think that'll be okay. Just thinking on the run. I changed my mind ever so slightly then. I'll tell you what I was going to do. I'm going to get a craft knife and just slice that off the side. This side's good. How do you like that? And this side, and across the base. I shouldn't really have it there either because I don't want that lifting up even though I'm going to put the whole thing over a joint up when I've finished. There we go. Close enough. Now it was this side I needed to take a little bit off. That's good. It's not actually cutting it, it's rolling it out of the way. There, that's good. Up the top here, I'm not overly concerned because I'm going to create a nice shape up here in stage 37 of this epic build. All right, bit on this one. There you go, that's why we put the put the tape on. Now epoxy's pretty thick. So you haven't got to we're gonna put a fair bit of pressure on with the clamp, so we haven't got to worry too much. About getting a super even coat on both surfaces that we're going to be gluing. Cool. All right, that's both sides on that one. And both sides will be done very soon on this one. Now there's no formula for working out how much glue to mix up. It comes with time of using it and you're going to throw glue away. It's better to throw some away at the end rather than not have enough and start mixing up another batch because they're going to have different cure times. Oh, this is lovely. Bring that like that. Oh. Push all that up there. So I haven't got too much left. What I'm going to do now is put that there. And I'm going to put my gloves on because we're getting to the stage now it's going to get messy. Now, here's another thing about these. I'm full of these ideas. Let me switch the cameras back to there. 
with these gloves, if you're going to use them more than once, don't be tempted to blow inside to expand them if you turn it inside out again. The reason being, moisture on these things makes them very grabby and you won't get your hand in there. See, even just the threat of me <laughs> doing that, oh, I'll probably stuff this one too, um, has made that one very grabby. It's probably just that I've got a tiny little bit of epoxy on my hand. Okay, cool. These are great. Now, the exciting part. It says, place the blade bevel down on and it, uh, sorry, place the blade bevel down on the blade bed, which is right there. I'll swing that around so you can see right here. Remember the bevel facing down. Then um, and it's just touching the leading edge. So I'm going to read that again. Place the blade bevel down on the blade bed and position the front piece of the body so it is just touching the leading edge. So this is the front piece of the body. So it's just touching the leading edge of the blade. That's it there. Finished. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. Uh, this will ensure a tight mouth opening. Clamp the front piece into position. Okay, well, we haven't clamped the back one yet. Let's do that. Getting ahead of myself, David. So we'll put this one over on this side. And this one over on this side. I'm going to come back a little bit because some of the timber that we don't use may... Oh, no, well, it's too late for that one. I've already got the clamp on it. Okay. Now, I'm going to use these. I'm going to use spring clamps because I think they'll fit. And they're very quick just to do an initial grab. I'm going to use the big fellows in a minute to pull it in super duper tight. How good is that? Oh, this, I'm going to switch the camera so you can see down in here again. I really should get that foot camera operation thing. How's that? You liking it? All right. So I've got that push down there. I could possibly put one of my larger clamps on now. I'm checking along the bottom that the timber hasn't slid up. That's one of the things when you're clamping up, you can get the situation where it'll start to slide around. That's why I'm using these little guys here straight away. Nice, how nice. And I think that's pushing down perfectly there. I'm going to check that the blade is just touching. Yes, it is. Just touching. And one more clamp up the front. All right. Now, the big fellows to give it some grunt. checking that it's all sitting nicely still. I need to move this back a little bit to give me some area to work. This one down here. Um, oh, that's pulling in nicely. Now I can lift her up and out comes the blade. And I'm going to put that over there because it's got epoxy on it. But let's have a look at the bottom of this. I'll bring the camera in a little bit closer. Actually, I'm going to do this with the camera. How's that? So you can see right the way along the base. Now if I wanted to, 
I could clean all that off now, and which I might do. That's great. Main thing I'm looking for is if there's any steps, and there's a step right there. This is exactly what I talked about. So I'm going to put a clamp on this way and squish it down there. Yeah, so just there is a little step. I'm going to pull that back with this. I should be able to do this. beautiful. I haven't done anything on that one, David, so no use even trying to touch it. And that one also is pretty good. I might put another clamp here. Um, that way. Good thing about parallel clamps. Beautiful. That's really nice. That's good all the way up there and there. And I think I need to move that one back a little bit to there. We'll switch the cameras again. Whoop, I'm not going to do it <laughs> with that glove on. I'll take the glove off. Switch transition. Okay. So nice. Okay, now that I know everything's in the right position, I can take the gloves off and bin them. I'm going to move this camera out of the way. <sighs> now, plenty of clamp there. There's a good clamp there. These are clamped this way. That's good. I might put another one here and move this one around to that back point. You know, I've got a few clamps, so why not? Uh, which one? I need something that's going to give me a similar kind of amount of force. Um, maybe, maybe not. There. There. And back a little. Good. Well, that made it squeeze out. Every time you put another clamp on, you get a squeeze out. So it is worthwhile doing it. You look at it and you think, oh, no, it's all good. But just look for the obvious areas that you think, well, I don't know if it's going to be grabbing it too much there. That could do with a bit more support. This one's at the back. And out comes the glue. <laughs> um, I think I need another one just here. These don't have as much power, but they're nice and easy and quick to put on. That's pulled it. I think that might do it. I might take this one off, put this one here, just to get the face. Yeah, that pulled it, that pulled it a little more. Cool. All right. I think that's it. Beautiful. Put this down on the floor out of the way. Now, I'm going to leave that in the clamps for quite a while. I won't take that out in half an hour. That's going to be, that'll still be kind of movable in an hour or so. So I'll leave that probably 24 hours. Leave it for 24 hours with the epoxy and it should be good. All right.
What's the next thing? What's the next thing? How are we doing for time? Uh, nearly, nearly out of time, but that's okay. That's okay. Switch this over here. And we'll move this camera back to here. Uh, I'll make, check first that I'm right with everything. That's good. The instructions are go going well. This great little project. If you want to get one, get it yourself. Um, I haven't got any links to it. As I said, I asked Veritas, I heard about it, and I asked them if they could send one over. I can show everyone. And they said, not a problem. Send it over. Um, where are we up to? This blade, oh, that'll be fine. That will pop off there easily. Thus, distraction update. Okay, so let me see where are we. Here we go. So this is the muffler that I built on the show a couple of weeks ago. And notice I've got a little bit of the floor mat, that kind of sponge, uh, foam, rubber kind of stuff, where it's making contact with the, uh, the Dexian pallet racking. Now also you'll notice towards the right-hand side of the muffler, or it might be the left-hand side for you, but anyway, the, the part away from where the, the foam is, that I've put a, 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 a saddle, screwed a saddle into the underside of that plywood shelf and I've suspended the pipe with string. This is one of the things that I've done to kind of reduce vibration and sound. And it's working very, very well. So now that is that has a slight fall to the outside, to, to outside from the, under the roof. So if it rains, I don't have water running down the inside and then into my muffler and then eventually into my impeller. Um, the next thing is from around 10 feet, I think it's, this thing's gonna work, around 10 feet away to the left-hand side out in the bush there, I turned the app on, on my phone and that's the result. This is with the machine running. That was fantastic. I was very, very, very happy with that. So back here, so there's little things that I'm doing. I thought, you know, I'll share you, share with you. Share, you. what am I talking about? <laughs> um, what else have we got? Uh, that's right. Do this. <laughs> um, not that camera, David. This one. All right. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? The Turner 220 block plane update. Now, when I bought it, remember this was only a week ago. Let's see if I can find a picture of it. This is the underside, the underneath. And I thought, oh my goodness, there's a lot of work to do on this. So the gentleman I bought it off as the we uh, struck a bit of a deal after I turned it upside down. I said, oh, you know, there's a lot of work got to happen to this. Um, and so he said, oh, all right, well, we'll, we'll change the dollars on it a little bit. Still cost a few dollars. All right. Now, what I'm doing is I've spent time using glass and sandpaper bonding it. And that's one of the things I was going to try and do today, create a little fancy thing for my sandpaper holders because I use this color-coded paper that's in a, in a roll. Let me change the cameras. There we go. Um, yes, yeah, so start that again. I'm gonna have people say, David, David, David. Uh, sorry. So the color-coded paper, I've put that down onto glass and it's almost impossible to spray it when it's all curled and it wants to pop up all the time. So spray it with contact adhesive. So I started sanding and the end was up and what happens when the end is up you get this thing happening now this is the 220 and i've started work on it so you can see here as the paper as the the plane pushes against the paper it's folding the paper down so every time you do a pass it's come back here a little bit every time you do a pass pushes the paper down and falls back up again pushes it down falls back up and creates that little wear and that's no good so I thought all right well I'm going to try a couple of other things so I used uh, a couple of smaller block planes that I've got that don't have the same value as this thing and I was trying it on the Sorby Pro Edge on their backing plate but it wasn't enough real estate and I found that the center was kind of 
rubbing a little bit too much and the outsides weren't. Then I thought, look, it, I shouldn't really do it on this machine. This is designed for timber. But I thought, all right, let's give it a try. One thing I was concerned about was that ordinarily a belt sander, the paper is lapped and you'll find there's a, a high point. So as it's rotating, you got this join. I go, ka dunk, ka dunk, ka dunk, ka dunk. The Pro Edge doesn't have a join like that. It's welded with a piece of um, extremely thin material underneath it. And I realized that the one that I'm using here has the same join. So I thought, all right, let's give it a try. So I did. And let me see if I've got the, this one. I've been mucking around with this one. This is my Falcon. So it's almost the same plane. Now I'm going to show you with this one, I've got the 60 grit paper on, and I'm going to take the uh, cellulose acetate handle off because it will get warm. And you'll also notice that I've got the blade and the lever cap still fitted because that's keeping the base of the body here, the sole, in tension. And that's how it's going to be. These will flex a little bit like that when you put the tension down here. I've got the blade pulled all the way back so it's not going to be in fear of touching the, the belt as it's spinning along. Uh, at the back of this, I do have that rounding. You can see it. Surely you can see it. There. Now I've attacked this a little bit with the 60 grit paper, but I thought I'd leave the rest of it to show you on the show. I will put the dust extraction port back on. It fell off. And you'll notice here I've got this camera set up and the camera is there on purpose because I want to have a little bit of video Uh, for a video that I make on actually doing this. I'll spin this around, zoom in a little, and a little bit more. That's good for that one. I'm excited about this, uh, this, this plane, if you hadn't realized, <laughs> if you hadn't noticed. Uh, now, I'm guessing that Ian, Kerry will be saying, Dave, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But I'll tell you what, when it's finished, mate, it's fantastic. I love, I love how it's going. I'm, I'm not going to do the sides. See, the sides I've done by hand. And I'm going to leave that pitting there on the sides. But the base, there's still a little bit more pitting. You can see it up the front there, just there. I want to get rid of that. And down the end, there's a little bit more as well. I want it to look beautiful. You can't bake a cake without breaking a few eggs. I'm not going to break the plane. It's going to be quite nice. Now, dust extraction on. Dust extraction over here. Close that. Of course, with metal filings, it's only a powder coming off. And there's no chance of it catching fire. Just making sure that I have all the other ports closed and turn the dusty on. All right. And I'm going to wear this, even with dust extraction. You know, it's not really worth it to uh, expose yourself to this kind of stuff without protection. That's sucking through there. Turn that one on. Turn this one on. Switch the cameras to you guys. To the other one. There we go. One other thing I'm going to do, I'll switch it back. If it doesn't matter, I'll get it going with it. I'm going to take the knob off the falcon and put it on the turner. Which is going to keep my fingers away from the body. So that's going to be easy. The only thing giving it away is the name here. 
So it's going to hold it well. Here we go. Transition. Hook. So you can see down the end here. One of the things is, don't dawdle as you put it down. Put it down fast. That's nearly gone. This little bit here, I'm going to turn it around this way. It's going beautiful. Beautiful. Nearly all done. A little bit there, a little bit there. Nearly. Still plenty of thickness here. And plenty of thickness here. That's right. That's that's all but gone. That's gonna do me. Pop that there. I'd love to know where the remote is. There it is. Switch cameras again. Beautiful. It is so good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out the belt and put a... Look at that. What a difference. Now that's really coarse. That's 60 grit. And I'm happy with that. I really am happy with that. Now I'm going to put another belt on. I'm going to go with a 120 grit. That was a 60 grit that I was with there. I go with a 120. Again, with the arrows the right direction. Um, you can see the joint. See that joint? That tape is, gives it no extra thickness. Nothing to speak of. Here we go. If you've got a small belt sander, this is probably not a good idea because those belts normally do have a join in them that will leave a witness. Kadunk, kadunk, kadunk. All right. Oh, that's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now, also, when you finish doing it like this, these edges are going to be sharp. So we'll have to clean, knock a bit of an arrow off. Those guys put the muffs back on. How are we doing for time? Good. Nearly done. We have a couple of things to do. Switch the camera. There we go. 120 grit. I'm off. Yeah, straight away. How much nicer is that? Another one? That's going to do me. switch the cameras, sorry not the cameras, I'm going to switch the paper again. I'm going from 120 up to 320. Now why aren't I going to 240? Well, 
someone else uses this machine as well and it melts the um, the product gets melted into the paper that makes it very hard for the paper to do any cutting we're so still on that camera I'm just going to have a look so that's 120 this is 320 Starting to polish it. Getting this. That's doing okay. Have a look at that. There's a couple of score marks in there. I'm not overly concerned. Take the uh, all the gear off. So it's three twenty there. A quick drink. I'm going to move the camera down the other end where I've got... Oh, actually, I'm going to move it just here. And turn this one off. Now, should I remind you of what this thing used to look like? I'm struggling away here with my cameras, but we're getting there. I'm going to throw up the picture of the turner this is before okay got a good look at that oh. and this is now it's beautiful all right we're going to go with this camera down here This is the area where it's more traditional. All right. I have a few different grades of paper here. I've got 600 through to 1500. I'll pop that fellow there. And I, I know that because I can read on the back. So 6, 8, 1000, 1200, 1500. You can't see that, can you? Okay. 600, 800, uh, 1000, 1200. 1500. I could go more, but I'm going to use this when we get to that point. All right, again, we'll put a little bit of water on with um, detergent in it. This has been glued down. nice is that um, I need some paper to just dry it off a little bit as I'm going and have a look so again 600 do a little bit more don't be scared to don't be scared to keep working one grit at a time because 
if you go too fast, you're going to have to go back and do it all again. Like I might have to come back and do some of this again too. But that's looking pretty good. We'll go to the next one. This paper is pretty worn out too. You can see the blue through it, which means that the, um, the abrasive is just about gone. And you see how this is all glued down tight, except for up there. That could be an issue. Because the, as, it's, as the plane's pushing up against it, it's going to be wearing the nose. But that's being 1500. It's not going to do anything. Cool. Next one. Oh, there's bumps and all sorts of things there. No, I'm not going to go that one. It's had it. So we go to the um, 1200. So we skipped. We went from the 800 to 1200. Now we'll go to 15, and that's going to do it. little hole there. I need to buy some more wet and dry. <laughs> These are the things that put a smile on David's face. this up on the bench. I'll come around to there. Okay. <sighs> A bit of the polishing compound. And The great thing about the bench. <laughs> um, one other thing we're going to do, if I've got a couple, oh, an hour and seven. Yeah, I think we'll do it. And we'll flip her over and do the other side. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a quick demo. We'll switch this camera around again. I've got a couple of minutes. We'll go a quarter past instead of an hour. And I'm going to do a quick demo on this guy here. Cleaning this was something I was thinking of. I might try and... I was given a sandblaster by my wife for my birthday. And I thought, oh, well, I might. What a great woman. <laughs> I might, um, I might fire it up and clean all of this with the sandblast. I see how it's all a mess. Well, you can see on this side I've already started and I'll show you a really, really easy way to do that. I use my bench, of course I do, and put that in there, this one in three dog holes away. And I will be taking these up to Brisbane. So if you want one, give me a shout. I've already got a couple of orders pre-booked. And a piece of sandpaper. I'm going to use this 80 grit, the cloth paper. Remember, this is the stuff I've been talking about lately. And I'm going to raise that up. Put that there. I'm going to make a sanding bow that actually I... You'll see. You'll see. You'll see. So that's one side. It ain't going anywhere. And the other side, I'll put back there. Put the longer one in so it sits on the grip tape. About there. And this one will relax and move it a little more that way. That's better. A little bit of mucking around, but if the, if you're kind of stretched for resources, this will do it. There. And 
there. What do you think? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And why not? Let's bring the camera around here and see if we can see what happens. Because some people probably still have no idea what I'm doing. Bring that in nice and close and down. About there. All right. So this part here, awkward to sand. Not anymore. That's no good. You need the camera in a better position. I'll bring it down lower. There, that's going to be better. So you can see it there. I'll come around the other side here. See that? Now that's taking the form really well because it's a curved surface. The paper's just flexing around underneath it. I love it. This is such, so easy. Bit more there. I've seen a lot of people just paint straight over this stuff. And I start to cringe because I want it to be as good as new or if not better. And then the purist might be saying, Dave, don't sand it too much. It's supposed to have a little bit of a dimpled appearance. Anyway. That's my little tip. I love it. All right, what have we got next? Switch the cameras again. My camera work hasn't been too bad. I've only stopped up once with the transitions. Okay, there's a dust extractor update, which we've done. The wooden hand plane, it's all down there. Doesn't it look magic? Uh, next week, we'll really hook into it. Um, let's uh, turn a 220 block plane and I love it, I love it, love it. Uh, the traditional tool groups meetings, you saw all that stuff. Um, the, next week, for the tickets uh, for the show. And I think that's all. Thank you very much for watching. <sighs> it's so raw. I wait all week so I can hook into this show and get more, more stuff done. Um, sometimes what I do is uh, I sneak a little bit on the side during the week and then I have to wait. But not to worry. Where are we? Intro and text. This is the screen. Thanks for watching. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. If you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I shall see you next week. Bye.